Text wrapping is how your text will appear next to or along with your graphics in the document. Like this dude right here, when I go ahead and select him, he only takes up, well, so much space. We've got this extra white space. So instead of having text above and below it, I can fill in this white space if I use the text wrapping feature to have the text wrap around it, not just be above and below it. To use the text wrapping feature, you can do it one of a couple of ways. One way is to go ahead and select the image and then come up here and click on its related contextual format tab. Go to the Arrange group and then there you go, wrap text. You can hover over it, read about it, and get a preview of what it's about with the image there. But if you don't mind, I'd like to go ahead and talk to you about it. Click on it and you get the different options down below. Now the default is in line with text, meaning that, well, each text has its own line, so does the image and the icon over to the left hand side of that image has the text lines and then the well upside down U it looks like not really a U looks like it's cut off in any case that represents the image and so you're looking at the lines and how they appear next to the image is how when you select one of these options it will appear in your document better yet instead of just kind of looking at that teeny tiny little image you can go ahead and get a preview by hovering over it like the square you see how the image is in square around the image? Well, on the right-hand side, not the left-hand side, because, well, we've got no room. It's right up against the left margin. So there's square, there's tight. And what tight does is when it sees that the image has white space around it, well, when we selected the image, like we did here, you've got the box of extra white space. So tight or through just says, hey, we got some white space that you probably don't mind if we just cut through it. If you do, then don't select it, but in any case, wrap text. Through is the same. You can do top and bottom, which you'd think is like the inline with text, but choosing the wrap text option top and bottom gives us some other options that we'll talk about in just a minute. You can do behind text or in front of text. Let's do behind text, select it, and then click off. And if you're like, oops, I made a mistake, and you can't undo it because let's say you ended your session, you saved it, and you open back up the document, and you're like, oh, rats and you can't select it because there's text in front of it so it's thinking of selecting the text or placing the cursor somewhere within the words here thinking that you want to edit that as opposed to selecting your image then you're in trouble unless you have some space in between your lines that you can go ahead and get a four-way arrow because now it sees the image there that you can click on select it if not your toast no i'm kidding if you don't have any space that you can select your image then what you can do is come up here on the home tab and go to the editing group click on select and by default it wants to select everything man and what we want to do is we want to just focus on the objects and not everything that includes the text but just objects when you click on that you see when i click on any of the text how it's like what are you doing i'm focused on objects right now please you focus too so that means when i go ahead and hover over the text that's in front of the object I get a four-way arrow. It doesn't see the text. It only sees objects. So you can go ahead and click right there and it selects it. Hey, isn't that beautiful? And then you can come back up here, click on the Format tab, change it. Or better yet, another way of doing this is when you select the image, you get the layout options right there that you can click on and go ahead and make your choices there. Let me go back to the default in line with text so I can show you something. When I try to click off, it won't let me because it's still in select object mode. So just hit the escape key on the keyboard. There we go. Now we can go ahead and select our text and, well, even going back to selecting our image here. Now when I go ahead and click on the tag here for the layout options, again, the default is in line with text. When I go ahead and hover over any one of these, I don't get the preview that I got when I came up here and clicked on the format tab on the ribbon. So. You just have to go with what you see here, or if you've done it enough, you know what you're doing. So there's square. You can see it square on the left-hand side and right-hand side. You can see it a bit better, can't you, than those teeny tiny little icons. In any case, once you go ahead and select any one of these options, these two additional options come into play, and also you'll get an anchor. Let me show you. Let's go ahead and do Squaresville. The moment I select it, these two options come into play, and the anchor. Now when you hover over the anchor, it says the selected object is anchored to the document text here. And that comes into relation with what we select here. Meaning that wherever the anchor's at, as far as pages go, that's where the image is gonna be. And so we'll go over that in just a minute, but let me focus on the move with text. 
meaning that, as you can see in the pop-up, it allows your object to move on the page as text is added or deleted. So if I come up here and I hit enter, 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 I add more text, well there you go, the image goes with the text, and that's nice. Let's go ahead and hit undo, select it again, click on the tag, as opposed to the other option. Well, when you select that, you can see in the pop-up, it'll keep your object in the same place on the page as text is added or deleted. However, if the anchor moves to the next page, your object moves as well. Well, how does that work? Let's go ahead and choose that option. And now the relationship with the anchor becomes more so because when I come up here and I hit enter, 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 and I add more text, the image is still positioned there, right? But where's the anchor? Because it says if the anchor moves and it actually goes to the next page, it'll take the object with it. So is the anchor moving when I add additional text? Let's find out. Select the image. Ooh, there's the anchor right about in the middle of it here. So if I come up here and I hit enter, 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 and I add more text, select the image. Where's the anchor now? Okay, towards the bottom. So when you add more text, it moves the anchor. So if you don't want the anchor to keep moving with the text, so it gets down to the bottom and pops over to the next page, because when it goes to the next page, it'll take the image with it. So you can go ahead and say, look, click on the anchor and drag it back up add more text, drag the anchor back up, add more text, so that way it doesn't get, well, when you add more text, pushed on the next page. As in an example here, let me click and drag the anchor down to, well, the bottom of the page, and then I come up here, and let's pretend I'm adding more text. I type in some text, hit enter, 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 and, oh, anchor finally got pushed off onto the next page, didn't it? Let's go ahead and scroll down, and it went to the next page. Select it, where's the anchor? Well, when it went to the next page, when I saw it disappear, I didn't hit enter anymore, so it should be at the top of, there you go, this page. So with what we're working with here, wherever the anchor is at on the page, it doesn't matter, but if it goes to another page, it'll take the object or image with it. Now when it takes it with it, notice how the position is still basically the same place as it was on the previous page, about right smack in the middle, four and a quarter inches. So that's a good point. How does that work? Well, let me go ahead and hit undo to get it back up there. Let's do several times to get it something. Let me scroll up. Okay. Let's go ahead and select it. Click on the tag. And let's go ahead and see more. Opens up the layout tab. I want to get to the text wrapping, but let's talk about the position because when we move the anchor to the next page, it took the image with it and it put it in, I think, what was pretty much the same position. Well, it wasn't at the top of the anchor or at the bottom or in some other place. So as far as the position goes, when it comes to your images, you can position it horizontally and or vertically. Now, as far as horizontal goes, there's nothing to position when you're at zero. And you can say zero inches to the right of a column, margin, page, character. As in this example down below with the vertical, so from top to bottom, it's 4.26 inches below the page, or you can choose something else. So it absolutely has to be at that position when we move the anchor to another page. So if you keep that in mind, and we go ahead and click Cancel, and let's go ahead and click and drag this back down. Well, let's just drag it to the next page. Anywhere on this page, doesn't matter. Because... When I select the image, then click on the tag, and see more, absolutely at the fixed position of 4.26 inches below page. Of course, it's not exactly centered, isn't it? 8.5 by 11, 8.5. What's half of 8.5? 4 and a quarter? Well, you can not mess with that and just say, look, let's just center it on the page as far as the alignment goes. Click okie dokie, and you see how it nudged it up just a skosh from 4.26 to 4.2 and a quarter. Now let me go ahead and hit undo. Enough with the position here. We're talking about text wrapping, but I think that helped. At least it did for me. I feel better. Let's go ahead and click on the tag here. Go down to see more, and go to the text wrapping tab. And Now for me, this makes it a little bit easier identifying how the wrapping style goes because you've got a picture of a woofy. And this woofy here, you can see how the lines go around when it's square or it's tight, it gets close and fills up any white space or through. So you can still select your options here. And depending upon what you select, you'll get some additional options down below, like with square. 
you can have the text wrap on both sides, and it's not wrapping on both sides currently because, well, the image is flushed left. It's up against the margin. So if I go ahead and click Cancel, and I click and drag him, oh, there you go. Now he's on both sides. Okie dokie. Click on the tag, see more, and then click Text Wrapping. And so now it's on both sides. You can focus just on the left, the right, or the largest only, or the largest side. And down below, if you want to be able to have more distance, like if the text is a bit too tight, maybe on the top there, or on the left or right-hand side, let's exaggerate to make my point. Let's say we want one inch from the top of the image as well as one inch below. Click Okie Dokie, and wow, that's huge. And so that brings up a good point. Maybe you didn't do this, but if you're trying to get this tight to the text above and below, and you keep dragging and keeps evading you, the text above and below, well, remember, you've got your see more and text wrapping options to go ahead and say, well, let's just do zero, and zero, and let's try zero left, zero right, hit enter on the keyboard, and then click off. Okay, it's right up against his nose, and well, you choose what works best for you. Let me go ahead and select the image and do one more thing, because I'm feeling a little ADD right now. But when you have it selected, the image, you can come up here, click on the Format tab, and we talked about the position, but that was when we clicked on the tag and we went to see more. In any case, in the Arrange group, you can go ahead and click on Position, and well, there you go. So as far as with wrapping text, it's right smack in the middle, or you can do it left, and that way you don't have to mess with it numerically. Or you can go to More Layout Options, and we're right back to the window where we started here, well, when we went the other way with clicking on the tag down to see more. Such a fun thing to say, see more. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.